keys to the game, Brian. Let's jump right in. Uh, we'll go offense first. Uh, your first key to the game, sir. It's simple, and we've talked about it a lot, so we don't need to rehash it again a ton. you got to win up front. Give Jack Cohn and Tyler Buckler time, be able to run the football. Now, I don't think winning up front requires 13 personnel and a bunch of 12 nope. personnel. You can do it out of 20, 21, and 11. But whatever you're in, be physical and be assignment sound. If you're physical and assignment sound, you will be. This is a very mediocre USC front seven outside of two guys that that you know one's injured, the others are true freshmen. You know Drake Jackson is not is not 100. Corey Foreman's a freshman who's been good but not great. He's not you know what Kayvon Thibodeau was as a freshman, for example. But this is this is a very mediocre linebacking core. It's a very mediocre interior defensive line. It, Notre Dame needs to be physical and assignment correct. Do that, and Notre Dame's going to score a lot of points in this game, in my opinion. I, I okay, so to, to kind of piggyback off of yours, my second one was Code need Cone needs time to be accurate. We kind of talked about that before. Um, but I'll go with my next one. I have on here that they need to establish the run. But that does not hold on a second. That does not mean that they need to go 12 and 13 personnel. That means spread it out, do your thing, but still run the ball because I don't think USC can stop Notre Dame running the ball if they're spread out. I don't think they can do it. They're terrible tackling in space. And I think that is going to help because I think then USC might start devoting more to the box. And I think that's going to benefit Notre Dame as well in their passing game. So I think that they do need to establish the run, but I want to see it done the right way. Yeah. I don't want to see it done with Michael Carmody wearing an eligible number. I don't want to see it with two tight ends, both attached to the line. Mm -hmm. You want to bring two tight ends in, that's fine. Spread one of them out. You know, you can keep one on the line, keep one attached, and put one out at wide receiver. Okay, fine. I can get on board with that. But I do want to I do want to see them establish the run. Yeah. I do. I don't really care about that. I don't think it's needed in this game. I, I'm fine with it if the run game's just a complement to the pass game. I, I really am. That doesn't mean I'm okay if they run for 85 yards. They have to run. But when I think of establishing the run, I think of your game plan's built around running the football. And I don't think their game plan plan needs to be built around running the football. Their game plan needs to be about how can we best get our best players the football and do it in different ways. And establishing the run game means, like I said, you're building around that. And I, and I think the run game needs to be a complement of the pass game. Now, if they come out and run the ball well on USC and, and they're going 12 per, I mean, look, Notre Dame could go 12 personnel in this game and run on USC. This is a bad defense. Yeah. But I don't think it makes you better moving forward. I, I, I just don't. And that's, that's my fear is that they're going to get a false sense of security of, of security that, hey, 12 so you're looking bigger random. picture. You're looking down I, the road. I am, but I'm also looking at USC. I don't think you need to do that. I think you can do that, but I don't think that's necessarily a way to achieve maximum su success in this game. I want to come out throwing the ball a lot and then force USC to widen out, then come at them with the hammer. That's what I want to see. So to me, I want to see you establish an efficient perimeter pass attack that's built on all three levels, screens, quicks, intermediates, and then taking shots. I think if you have that success, then that's when the, the stuff inside opens up. And we actually saw that in 2017. That's the interesting thing. Notre Dame ran for 377 yards that game. But people forget what the reason they were so good running the ball is they hit shots early. First touchdown pass of the game, touchdown of the game was a, a Brandon Wimbush hit an EQ on a post route. The second touchdown was a back shoulder throw to Kevin Stefferson, and they had mixed in some reverses in that game, which I don't count as the run game per se. Sure. No, I get that. Um, you know, that's again, that's perimeter. And when they started having success with that, USC was like, what the hell do we do? You know, like we're sitting there thinking we're gonna we're trying to protect against you know Q and McGlinchey and bars, and and these guys are freaking attacking the perimeter. And then all of a sudden, those inside creases. I mean, if you think about how Josh Adams ripped them that game, it was right up the middle. Because, and there was the one play his 80-yard touchdown run where he hands it off and Wimbush takes off to the right, the linebacker, the safety on that side, both ran with Brandon Wimbush because they were so afraid of the perimeter. And then all of a sudden, Josh Adams just bam, right up the middle behind Alex Bard for an 80-yard touchdown. Because that in that particular game, they somewhat reverse engineered their, their offense. And I think that's what Notre Dame needs to do this year. And I think that's especially what they need to do with, Cincinnati, with USC. That, to me, would be a key to this game. My, my last key, and you can kind of sense a theme here, I guess, uh, but I have that the running backs need to be an important piece. Yeah, right? and that's my second That's my second one. Yeah. But I, I want them involved in the pass game. You know what I mean? I, look, if Ty Chris Tyree is out, okay. Logan so for Diggs. you, this is a running back game. Yeah. A I, big I, time I, running back game for you. Yes, absolutely. I mean, your and, first two keys are 
running back focused. Yeah, they are. And I, I, it's funny that that's the way it turned out. But like, as I was thinking through the game, I want to, I don't want to see the running backs in blocking. You right. know what I mean? I want to see them out. I want to see them involved in the offense. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, whether it's Chris Tyree or Logan Diggs, either one can have success in this game. Right. You can use Logan Diggs the same way that you were going to use Chris Tyree. Like they're not exactly the same guy, but right. Logan Diggs can do what they've been asking yeah. Chris Tyree to do. Which up is to this point. lining up and running between the tackles. And yeah. Logan's really good at that. And then put yeah. Kyron out in the slot. Yeah, and right. he can and he can catch an arrow route and he can do the things that you need him to do. Yeah. So um, I my number I, two key Vince was a similar. It's attack the linebackers. Yes, that's yeah. mine. Now, now obviously the running backs are, are step one to that. Yes, no uh, question. I mean, Kyra, if Kyron Williams doesn't have at least five targets in the pass game in this game, where it's like it's obvious that he was kind of like part of the initial read, then Tommy Reese isn't doing this this thing right, and I think he will. I think we're going to see that. And it, I'm watching USC's linebackers of coverage. I'm thinking, oh, my gosh. Like, if Notre Dame's able to use their running backs effectively and Avery Davis effectively against the, the, the line and Michael Mayer effectively against their linebackers and safeties, Notre Dame's going to steamroll them. I'm not confident that they will actually build around that completely, but I think there's opportunities for big plays. They have – this is a very, very mediocre – linebacking core yes like this absolutely. is not your vintage where you're like man there's some five-star kids but they're just young no these guys are just average mm -hmm. football players they're not good and and whether it's logan diggs or chris tyree or kyron williams or or whoever else i mean put audrick Essam in there and say hey hammer hammer those line because they're not they're not they're not it uh so i want to see them the, part of the game plan has to be about attacking the linebackers in the box and outside the box find Love ways that. to isolate your best for players Love it against their linebackers. And as we've talked about, Kyron Williams is their best skill yeah. player that's not a tight end. Yep. And he needs to be he need the game plan needs to be built around him at him and Lindsay and Mayer and Austin. I mean, all those guys being the big factors in the pass game. My third was make them chase. Mm -hmm. USC is a very undisciplined team. Mm -hmm. When your whole offense is vertically oriented, right? So everybody's kind of going this way, it makes it real easy for an undisciplined team to know what they're going to do. Because, hey, that guy's just running vertically. He's running it in. He's running it out. I know who I got. When you start making them cross and do levels with high, high lows, even if it's coming from the same side, you know, whatever the case may be, uh, those things are all effective against an un undisciplined team. Yep. They no make question. a lot of mistakes. Get them chasing. And we've seen some things, you know, send the running back on a wheel route and bring somebody across. You know, run run your smashes out of different right. concepts. There are, there, reminds me a lot of the Florida State game. You know, Florida State was a very you know, not not elite like not like they used to be, but a pretty athletic defense. But it's not a real smart, disciplined defense. And Notre Dame did a lot of stuff, you know, that smash concept, and you know, with the tight end, the running back on a release, and there's different things they did that game that put them exposed Florida State. I want to see some of that stuff in this game too. Make them chase, and that's levels, crosses, screens, jets, reverses, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Make them chase because then. That other stuff will come next time you 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 know if you run a reverse for success the next time you fake a reverse and you're handing off an inside zone to Logan Diggs that backside linebacker is going to be freaking out about that reverse and then bam you're hitting that inside zone right down his throat those are the things that to me they have to do make USC chase I love that I love yeah. that because they they they're going to look silly I mean bottom line is if they're chasing they're going to look silly and uh, <laughs> I'm all for that yeah. So. All right, let's let's switch over to defense, Brian. Some uh, some keys to the game on defense. Well, my number one, Vince, is is I mean, it's simple. It's control the line of scrimmage. Okay, get pressure on Keaton Slovis. Don't let him run the ball. USC is going to try to run the ball in this game. They're going to learn from the mistake they made in 2019. Same coaching, same offensive coaching staff. Graham Harrell came out in that game and was pass, 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 and Notre Dame ate them up. You know, again, jumped to a 23 lead. Second half. USC came out, and they were a lot more balanced. Now, at the end of the game, USC didn't have great rushing numbers. Uh, but if you look at what they did, they, they ended up running for like 171 yards, which isn't like an elite game. But for that offense, it's a lot of yards. Yeah. And a lot of it came in the second half because they're like, fine, you want to go nickel personnel, we're going to just run it. And it created a sense of balance to where then all of a sudden the perimeter stuff started being more effective. Notre Dame has to control the line of scrimmage in this game. They have to shut down the USC run game because I do think they're going to try to come out and be balanced. And so, to me, that's that's what we need to see. Pressure. If you pressure Keaton Slovis, 
Mm -hmm. And if Jackson Dart plays and USC said, well, he's not medically cleared yet from the rumblings we're hearing is it's, I think it's a, it's a, it's a head fake is what I think. Mm -hmm. But it, it, whoever's a quarterback, I don't care. Pressure the quarterback. They will make, they will. And when Keaton Slovis makes mistakes, they're big. It's not like an incomplete pass. It's he's throwing it to you. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. And, right. And somebody, right. Like I was on a show the other night and they're like, you know, th this, this quarterback doesn't turn the ball over a lot. And I'm like, uh, actually, yeah, he kind of does. Because uh, if you look at Keaton Slovis' numbers this year, he's got he's got five picks in six games. Last year, he had seven picks in six games. So in the last, you know, thir in the last twelve games, he's thrown twelve picks, and he's had a couple fumbles in that time too. He will give you the ball if you pressure him, and they have to do that. Shut down the run, pressure the quarterback, and USC has no chance. I mean, literally, I could just say that's the only key to the game. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, that's I could get be, lazy yeah. and do that, and it would it would be really accurate. <laughs> Well, I, I don't know if this is a lazy take or not, and I still want Notre Dame to be aggressive, but my first one is just keep everything in front of you. Just I, to, to, I, I, I don't want them to get big played. I want them to keep everything in front, and then that goes to my next one, which is they have to be able to tackle in space. See, I think I like that one a lot better than the first one because I think keeping everything in front of you is exactly what USC wants you to do. They want you to play off. They want you to, they want you to let them nickel and dime them all the way down the field. I think you have to be aggressive. You have to take away the short stuff. But to your point, Vince, you have to be great in space. Yes, no You have question. to be great in space against this USC offense because they they live and die on either teams playing soft, right, which then allows them to just – you know, Graham Harrell would be perfectly fine throwing the ball 60 times a game and averaging five and a half yards in an attempt at, with a 70-plus – because, again, he that's his run game in a lot of ways. Is that no, absolutely. Stuff. No question. You have to if, if he catches it at three, he has to be stopped at three. Correct. But you That's have to the big do that thing for within me. the framework of a more aggressive defense that tries right. to get him to force him the ball downfield. So that's I why want I them to be the, aggressive. Yeah, but yeah, but when it's hard to be aggressive and keep everything in front of you. I think the 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 take for me would be the second part of what you said, which is you have to be great in space. You have to be great in space. If you're one on one with a running back on a swing route, you can't miss because now a two yard loss turns into a fifteen yard gain. If Drake London catches a screen pass, you got to bring him down quick. Yes. Because if he makes the first guy miss, he's going to go. So that to me is be great in space. And, and that leads to kind of my second point. My second key was uh, you have to have a Drake London plan. And yep. now, look, Drake's going to catch the ball. Like David mm -hmm. Bell had seven catches against Notre Dame. Right. right. That's a lot of catches. But he didn't do anything. 64 yards. Yeah. You have to have a Drake. If you're going to get beat this week, get beat by somebody not named Drake London. If you can beat us, this was if I'm Notre Dame, if you can beat us without Drake London make being taking the game over, then good on you. Right. And you know, I don't care if he catches eight, nine balls, but it's got to be for like eight, nine, ten yards of carry. You gotta avoid the game wrecking plays. If he catches it at five, bring him down to five. I don't care. Because mm -hmm. eventually we're gonna be able to like look again. I'm when I say we, I'm looking at it from the defensive coaching standpoint. If you want to hit a five yard gain to him and we're tackling, eventually you're going to miss that throw or we're going to do something and, and it's going to be incomplete. Now you're in third and 10. Now you can't throw him a five-yard game. So I think it's it's eliminate the big the big play. You know, uh, that's the big key for me. Yeah. Eliminate no, I, the big yeah. plays. Yep. Eliminate Drake making plays after the catch. If you can do that to Drake Bowen, and I don't care if he catches 12 balls, Drake London. I don't care if he tw catches 12. You see my mind's still on recruiting. I said Drake Bowen. Yeah, I don't care if Drake London catches 12 balls, but if it's 12 catches for 95 yards or 101 yards, then he's not taking over the game. He's not making game exactly. wrecking plays. That's yep. the key. You can't and let that, him wreck the game. And then and that's why I wrote down contain London. It yeah. didn't say stop. Yeah. Because you're you're not going to stop. Because that's completely. what they did to David Bell. I mean, right. David Bell had a 31 yard play in that game, but when David Bell caught those screens, he was getting taught caught tackled the line of scrimmage. Right. And exactly. that's to your point. And that goes back to your second point, Vince, which is you got to be great in space. Yep. Corners have to be great. They have to be aggressive. To me, that's the number one. Blow up it. blockers, yeah. fly to the ball. If you yep. do that, they're going to be good. My final key, Vince, is the linebackers have to play great. The USC stresses the heck out of your linebackers. Run game, pass game, screens. They really stress your linebackers offensively. JD and Drew White have to be great in this game. Mm -hmm. They have to, and, and if Jack Kaiser and Isaiah Pryor in the game, and I, again, I don't know the structure of what they're going to do. Is it going to be four two with a pure nickel? Is it going to be three three with a nickel, which would then put the Rovers in the game? I don't know what they're going to do, but who, however many linebackers are on the field, they have to play great because yeah. USC is going to look at them and say, "What is the weakness of this team?" There's two, right? 
linebackers in the pass game and your cornerback's not named Cam Hart. Correct. And USC's going to go after that. Absolutely. And they are. that's going to be a big key. And so yeah. they have to not allow this game to become down to Drake. And that's part of the Drake London plan. If if you have Clarence Lewis or Treat Racy locked up on camp on, on on Drake London, they need to have a call that that gives them help. If you're I mean, if look, Alec Pierce is a good player, he ain't Drake London. And they left him isolated against they left Clarence isolated against Alec Pierce the whole game and he got dominated. They can't do that against Drake London. Right. Because we'll see a very similar result. Agreed. That game. So those are those are my keys, Vince. I got those one more. Keys. I got one more. Yeah. Um, you, they need to continue USC's touchdown woes in the red zone. Yeah, because and I think been the, great. They have on defense they, in the red zone. They've been excellent, and and USC has been very poor scoring touchdowns in the red zone. I think they're like fifty six percent when they get in there. The rest they kick field goals, but they're not good at getting touchdowns. And yeah, so no, they're, one, they're one of the best teams in the country at getting points once they correct. get the red zone. They're like ninety six percent. They've only been stopped yeah. once, right, in the red zone, right. But to your point, Vince, those are usually they have fourteen touchdowns this year and and ten um, ten field goals. Right, exactly. That, that's, and that's they they need to continue that because look, yeah. I, I I still think with everything that we said, I still feel like USC is going to get their yards. They're 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 going to move the ball a little bit, but if they get into the red zone, you you have to keep them out yeah. of the end zone. If you can this do that, the, you're going to win the game. This is the craziest stat I've ever seen. They're eighth in the country, and I put when I put because I made those cards for you mm-hmm. guys for the show. Eighth in the country in red zone offense overall, right. just scoring eighth, right? Ninety six percent, twenty four twenty five. They're eighty sixth. In touchdown conversion percentage, <laughs> right, eighty sixth. That's such a difference. It, it really is kind of wild. And and Notre Dame's defense is is kind of similar in that. Where if you kind of look at Notre Dame's red zone numbers overall, they're not great. Uh, I think. I mean, I'm pull it up here. They rank sixty uh, seventh overall in red zone um, scores allowed, twenty to twenty four. Now, I think that's a little misleading because there's been at least that I can think of five times where the other team started the drive in the red zone. I, I, at least three for sure. Okay. I think, yeah. I think I'm trying to think like four or five and, or the other team. And for sure there's more than four or t- five times that the other team has started the ball in Notre Dame territory. That's like a first down away from being in the red zone, but then Notre Dame ranks 10th in touchdowns allowed. They've only given up 10 touchdowns on 24 red zone possessions. There was a drive where USC against Cincinnati started inside Notre Dame's 10 yard line and they held them to a field goal. Right. I mean, Virginia Tech had first and goal at the two yard line and they held them right. to a field goal. Right. You've got to do that, Vince. And your point is absolutely correct. USC is going to move the ball when they get across your field, hold them to three. Yep. That's going to be a big part of this. Game. That's exactly right. And, and and so you can add to that. If you limit limiting the big plays is a big part of that. Cause if you can get into the red zone, then you have more room because this is the fastest defense USC is going to have played this year. There's going to be throws Keaton Slovis thinks he's been able to make all year that he's not going to make if Kyle Hamilton's back there. Yeah, yeah absolutely correct. Right? Or Cam Hart's back, or, you know, outside. So that's going to be a big key, big key for me. 